This is O'Keeffe country, a land the painter Georgie O'Keeffe made indelibly her own. Northern New Mexico transformed the artist's work and changed her life. As soon as I saw it, that was my country. I've never seen anything like it before, but it fitted to me exactly. It's something that's in the air. It's just different. The sky is different. The stars are different. The wind is different. I came at 29, and I think I stayed about two months and a half. And I had a very good year working. And then maybe I stayed a little longer every year. That first summer in New Mexico resulted in a torrent of new paintings that continued unabated for decades. In 1934, O'Keeffe discovered the spectacular beauty of an area known as Ghost Ranch, north of Santa Fe. For more than 40 years, she spent every summer and fall in this adobe house she owned, working outdoors and in this studio. She wrote to a friend, It's the most wonderful place you can imagine. It's so beautiful. It's ridiculous. And I have this mountain, the Pedernal, God told me that if I painted it often enough, he would give it to me. New Mexico gave O'Keeffe the privacy and solitude that were essential to her. Where she could live in intimate contact with nature, for nature was the true source of her art. If we understand George O'Keeffe's intense emotional response to nature and her need to create an equivalent in art, we hold the key to her work. In O'Keeffe's native Wisconsin, where she first made art, Nature was her subject. In her 20s, as an art student in Chicago and New York, she could easily imitate the work of other artists. But this was of no interest to O'Keeffe. She stopped painting. It was all academic. You were taught to paint oh, like somebody else. Made me not want to paint at all. You wanted to paint your own way. She found her own way through the teachings of Arthur Dow and his radical approach to art. His idea was, to put it simply, to fill a space in a beautiful way, which was a new idea to me. She started to work again, but with a difference. In 1915, O'Keeffe used nature as a point of departure and began a series of abstract experiments, unusual for an American artist at that time. Her letters reveal her self-doubt. I wonder if I'm a raving lunatic for trying to make these things. In December 1916, she sent some of these charcoal drawings to a close friend in New York. Anita Pollitzer immediately showed them to Alfred Stieglitz. Stieglitz was already famous as a great photographer, leader in the fight for recognition of photography as an art form, and first champion of modern art in America at his legendary gallery in New York City, known as 291. Stieglitz's excited response to the originality of O'Keeffe's charcoal drawings would be matched six months later by his reaction to the artist in person. He would show 10 of her innovative drawings in a group show in 1916. That fall, O'Keeffe went off to teach in Canyon, Texas, in the vast plains of the Panhandle. In dozens of abstract watercolors and oils, she expressed her fascination with the natural phenomena of Texas. The steep canyons, the dazzling sunrise, 
the evening star that came out while it was still daylight. Attaching a six cent stamp to a mailing tube, she sent a roll of watercolors to Stieglitz. Astonished by their color and abstract vision, Stieglitz gave O'Keefe her first solo show in April 1917. When she traveled from Texas to New York, it was only partially to see her pictures on the walls of 291. Stieglitz, well, it was him I went up to see. Just had to go, Anita, and I'm so glad I went. For nearly a year, O'Keefe and Stieglitz had been writing constantly to each other, letters that were a revelation to both. They discovered that they saw the world through similar eyes, and they fell in love. In June 1918, O'Keefe left Texas for New York. Stieglitz had promised her a year in which she would be free to paint. O'Keefe and Stieglitz lived in New York City and spent the summers at Lake George, New York. They inspired and influenced each other's work. Stieglitz photographed his love in a landmark series of more than 300 photographs. O'Keefe painted her joy. Between 1918 and 1923, she created some of the most original and significant abstractions of American modernism. However, before these paintings were exhibited, a traumatic experience changed the direction and emphasis of her work. At his 1921 retrospective, Alfred Stieglitz showed 45 portraits of O'Keefe, including many intimate nudes. These photographs and what Stieglitz said and wrote about her work created an image of O'Keefe for critics and public as a sensual and sexual creature. Two years later, at the first major show in New York of more than 100 of O'Keefe's paintings, the critics took their cue from Stieglitz and described her work, but especially her abstractions, as expressions of her sexuality. O'Keefe shocked and disheartened by these interpretations, turned deliberately to recognizable subjects. Pears were pears, and flowers were flowers. Her large-scale flowers, influenced most likely by photography, added a new dimension to the tradition of flower painting. But alas, these two would receive Freudian analysis. Although O'Keefe became known for her paintings of recognizable forms, she never abandoned abstraction. But whatever she painted, it was her fusion of the abstract and the real that gave solidity and strength to her painting. Well, if it wasn't good in the abstract sense, it wouldn't have been much good just to paint a cross as nothing. O'Keefe's New York paintings combining abstraction and reality, show her interest in modernist photography. At the time, she was told, What are you going to paint New York for in a way you can't do that? The men haven't even done very well with it. What do you think you're going to do? The 20s brought O'Keefe recognition and great success. Her paintings were praised by critics and bought by collectors. In 1924, O'Keefe and Stieglitz were married. Their marriage lasted until his death in 1946. Yet by the end of the 20s, the painter who loved open spaces and color was feeling stifled. She wrote to a friend, Here at Lake George, everything is very green. I look around and wonder what one might paint. 
1929, she spent the summer in New Mexico. George O'Keefe hadn't known she was searching for a spiritual home. But she knew it when she found it. You know, I never feel at home in the East like I do out here. I feel like myself, and I like it. She settled permanently in New Mexico in 1949, living at Ghost Ranch, or in the small village of Abiquiu. Well, Mr. Stieglitz had died, and I had settled his estate, and I could live where I wanted to. There was nothing holding me in the big city. So I came out here. I always knew I'd live out here if I had a chance. With the collaboration of photographers and journalists, O'Keefe redefined herself on her own terms and in a mode vastly different from the Stieglitz image. She became an iconic mythic figure, the loner in the desert. Concealed behind these facades was another personality, known mainly to close friends, lively, witty, and very human. O'Keefe has said, it takes courage to be a painter. I always felt I walked on the edge of a knife. On this knife, I might fall off on either side, but I, I'd walk it again. Oh, what? What if you do fall off? I'd rather be doing something I really wanted to do. <laughs> 